Hello, I'm Dan Clark, and welcome to another in my series about board governance. Today, this episode, The Basics, I'm going to share with you some of the words and concepts out of the preamble of my model manual that's written for credit unions, and at the end I'll tell you something else about for nonprofits. In this preamble, which precedes the entire 71-page document, it says that the board of directors recognizing the complex nature of organizations today has decided that it it's beyond the board trying to do all the work that is necessary to make the organization a success or to make it continue to be successful. So they have hired, the board has hired an executive that is knowledgeable and can run the business that this manual of governance, what it does is it clarifies the roles, what the board keeps and what the board expects management to accomplish. A friend of mine just recently told me that one way to describe board governance is here's who has the final answer. And sometimes the person with the final answer may want to ask the audience in this sense, the executive, a smart executive, will probably, from time to time, pose a question about their authority and what they're about to do to the board for their advice. Now, there's three values for that. One is that that executive is acknowledging the value that the board brings to the table. Second, the executive gets a chance to have the board give information and feedback and share their wisdom with the executive as he or she makes that decision. And that emphasizes the value, the purpose of a board, as Peter Drucker puts it. The board's job is to help management substitute foresight for hindsight. And third, when the executive makes a decision, the board is not surprised by it because it was advised or asked for its wisdom beforehand. The preamble goes on to say that the board is related to the ends. The board is focused on What's the outcome of our operation? What's our impact to the people who depend on us? What's our impact to the communities we serve? And management is the means to that end. The board is about ends. Management is the means and is about the means. The executive is the only employee of the board and controls all of the other means and you'll learn more about that as we develop other episodes on board governance. The policies, the board expects these governance policies to be readily understood so that compliance with them comes naturally and easily. The board recognizes its policies as guidelines subject to interpretation unless the wording leaves little doubt through its use of the word will, must, and shall. The board will take action with volunteers and the executive when it finds that these policies were ignored or egregiously misinterpreted. Governance policies on the following pages further expand and clarify this preamble. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, when the board writes a governance policy and transfers a lot of legitimate authority to its executive, it doesn't just ignore what the executive does with that. The board retains its oversight of the executive and must be able to show the community and our society that the board has oversight, has established accountability. So that's one of the things that the policy manual will discuss as well. CEO, executive director, here's what you are authorized to do and report, and here's what we want in the reports so that we can understand 
what it is you've done with this authority. Because if we didn't give it to you, it would remain with us. But we think it's better in your realm. Now, I, let me ask you this, directors. Is it okay to misspend the community or members' money? Now, every time I've asked this in an audience of directors, they all say unanimously, heck no, we can't steal their money and we can't misuse the money. So let me ask you, when you hired your chief executive, you bought a certain amount of talent and expertise and knowledge. If you pay that executive 100% of the salary you agreed to, but do not let that resource utilize all that they bring to the table, maybe you only let them make 70% of the decisions they're capable of, then how does that relate? to the best use of the money you're charged with overseeing? I think it's a reasonable question. Challenge your status quo. Have you given authority? Now, I hear the argument sometimes, well, we do give this executive the authority. He or she writes, for example, personnel policies and brings them to us. We don't write them. He or she writes them. Well, then what are you doing with them? If that person is capable of writing those policies, then why can't you trust and otherwise control the writing and adoption of personnel policies by the executive? I think that's worth a question at a board meeting sometime soon in your experience. To learn more about me, Visit danclark.com on the web. Have a great day.